BYU Cougar baseball is on the air as the Batcats get ready to take the field. Rockets want deep left field. Left fielder looks up. That is a grand slam home run. This is BYU baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now to get you ready for Cougar baseball, here's Jason Shepard. Good morning, BYU baseball fans. Welcome into Miller Park on the beautiful campus of Brigham Young University, where today the 10-3 and BYU Cougars host the 6-5 and Panthers of Milwaukee. Jason Shepard with you here from Miller Park, joined as always by my broadcast partner and BYU baseball director of operations, Tuckett Slade. Tuck, BYU has taken the first two games of this series. It was originally scheduled as a four-game series, but today is the third and final game after last night's game two of the doubleheader was canceled due to weather. But so far, so good for the Cougars. Yeah, so far, so good. The, the offense has been the key this week, right? Is coming out 11 runs, then 14 runs. It's been fantastic. And, and most importantly, the great thing about so far with that game getting canceled is we won the series. Right? But let's get greedy now and get a final win to sweep this series and go into conference play on a good note. Well, you mentioned the uh, the runs. BYU in the home games they've played this week are averaging 10 runs a game. The offense has certainly come alive. That's just one of the things that I talked with the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Mike Littlewood, about. Started off talking about, though, the quick turnaround from the game yesterday to today's game, which starts at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. What was nice is we got the win just in time, five innings, and it was a little scary yesterday going down 3-0 because we knew it was only going to be a five-inning game because of the weather. We have these quick turnarounds, especially Friday night into Saturday. Usually we play at 1 o'clock because of uh, Milwaukee's early flights. We have to play at 11, and so our guys are used to it. We've done it already twice this year, um, these quick turnarounds, and so we'll be ready to play today. Very productive homestand thus far. Not only have you won the games that you've played, but offensively, the runs you guys are putting up, but you're averaging 10 runs a game at home, including the season high 14, which came in five innings. The offense has really come alive too. Yeah, we're swinging at one through nine. That's that's an important thing in our lineup. We're getting incredible uh, production from this week with DJ McNew in the seven hole. He's been doing great. Hit a home run uh, on Thursday night. Noah Hill, I mean, gets a hit every other time at, at the plate right now. So he's <laughs> he's doing great in that in that eight hole. And then uh, Carson Matthews in our in the nine hole is, is doing an incredible job. Uh, he's starting to hone in on his zone a little bit more and take taking balls and swinging at strikes. That's one of our you know we that seems so simple, but uh, in baseball it's tougher than it, than it th- you know tougher than you'd think. That's why you see guys in the big leagues taking balls of two inches off the plate and they and they call them balls and you know sometimes we swing at balls two feet over our head. And so Carson being a freshman, he's learning how to control his zone and, and the pitches he can hit. Um, you know we're doing this really. Mitch McIntyre's on fire this weekend, but we were. Before this weekend, we have, we've been winning games without Jellich swinging it, without Brock Hale swinging it, without Mitch McIntyre swinging it. And so the other guys, Clough's on fire. Um, so I just hope we can keep the consistency one through nine. Well, and Justin Sterner is going to take the mound for you, and Justin has been fantastic to start the year. He really has. I mean, Justin just goes up there and pounds his own. I mean, he's, he's pretty much a fastball guy. What made him really effective last week at Lamar was he was able to spin his curveball over for, for a strike. He's got a, a curveball and a slider. When he's effective command-wise with those pitches, um, he's pretty lights out because his fastball is going to sit 90, maybe 90, 91, but the spin rate and the, and the carry it has on it, um, it looks like it's probably 93, 94. You'll just see not many guys getting good swings off him, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's what we'll see today today final non-conference game conference play begins next week good luck today coach thanks yeah thanks a lot show that was BYU baseball head coach Mike Littlewood for lineups and the first pitch let's rejoin Jason Shepard we're about to get underway here at Miller Park as we mentioned number 18 Justin Sterner on the mound for the Cougars comes in with an ERA of 1.20 and a 2 and one record and the first batter he will face, Devin Rybacki. The first pitch to Rybacki, taken for ball one. Rybacki leading off, playing center field. Mitchell Bubin will hit second and play second base. And Trevor Schwecki at shortstop will hit third. Well, this is a tough matchup for Sterner, being they come off just a fantastic start against Lamar in his last start in the shutout. But then you're facing a team who is a fastball hitting team. And he's a fastball command type pitcher. He likes to really throw his fastball. So it's one of those matchups that it's going to say, hey, who's better, hitting the fastball or throwing the fastball by him? Rybacki hitting 364 coming into today's game. Swing and a miss. Now one ball and two strikes. On the leadoff man, Devin Rybacki, the redshirt senior from Hanover Park, Illinois. 
The one-two count evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Tuck, a much different situation that we're looking at on the field today. we got the sun shining through. You haven't seen the sun all week, Shep. It has been a while since we've seen the sun. We won't talk about temperatures because we're inside in the press box. I mean, players are dealing with something completely different. That ball grounded to D.J. McNew at second base. Over to Brian Sue for the first out of the inning. One up and now one down in the top of the first. Defensively for the Cougars in the outfield. In left field, Mitch McIntyre. In center field, Danny Jelilich. Brock Hale manning right field. At third base, Jackson Clough. Shortstop, Carson Matthews. D.J. McNew once again at second base. Brian Sue at first. Behind the dish, number two, Noah Hill. And the designated hitter, number 17, Keaton Kringlin. Mitchell Bubin takes strike one from Justin Sterner. And Sterner's going to come right at you, Shep. He's 90 to 93 mile an hour fastball, really good breaking ball, but his fastball's his best pitch, and he loves to attack you inside and outside with it. It's the outside corner. Sterner quickly ahead, 0 and 2. Bubin hitting 348, has five doubles on the season. 13 runs batted in. The 0 2 pitch to Bubin. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Sterner's faced two batters. And BYU has two quick outs here in the top of the first inning. Yeah, good breaking ball right there. Got him set up with the back-to-back -back strike one and strike two outside fastballs. And he started that curveball at that same location. He thought it would be a fastball. And then by the time he committed, it breaks away from him and no chance of hitting that pitch. Shortstop Trevor Schwecki at the plate. Nobody on. Two outs. Righty on righty matchup here. Schwecki with seven RBI, hitting 226 from Marshfield, Wisconsin. He's a junior. 1 0 pitch. Lined into center field, right at Danny Jelilich. Three up, three down in the top of the first. Cougars coming to the plate. No score on the W.TV and the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. BYU Baseball brought to you by Bank of American Fork. Enjoy a free checking account that can earn big interest with the MyRate checking account from Bank of American Fork. BYU coming to the plate in the bottom of the first. Panthers unable to score three up, three down. Nice start from Justin Sterner. Today's starter for the Cougars, Danny Jelilich leading off the Cougars. Brian Sue playing first base, hitting second. Brock Hale will bat third. Clean up Jackson Clough at third today. Designated hitter Keaton Kringlin will hit fifth. Mitch McIntyre back in left field will hit sixth. DJ McNew hitting seventh. And the very first pitch from Panthers pitcher Mike Edwards hits Danny Chelilich. Jelly taking off the uh, protection. No, wait, what are they saying? Yeah, that? so a new rule in college is that if you if you lean over and get hit, that it doesn't count so as a hit by pitch. They're it, blaming Danny for that one. Yeah, which it was up and in, hit him in, hit him up in the shoulder. There was no so, way he could avoid getting hit on that. So it'll just be ball one as well it'll be. Ball one to Danny Jelilich. Rounding out the starting lineup, we mentioned DJ McNew hitting seventh. Noah Hill behind the dish will hit eighth. And at shortstop, the freshman Carson Matthews will bat ninth for BYU. One ball, no strike. Mike Edwards, 2-0 on the season with a 2.45 ERA. Yeah, and I, uh, doing the scouting report, Shep, I really believe this is their best pitcher. He's had two really good starts, 88-91. Kind of more of a cutter than a slider. It's a hard pitch, but uh, commands it, and it's a good little arm. 2-0 pitch, gets the outside corner. Now two balls and one strike to Jelilich. Yeah, he's got uh, 14 in, a, in two innings pitched, two-thirds innings pitched this year. He's only got eight strikeouts, but only given up uh, four in runs. So pretty good little arm. Yeah, sophomore from Oak Forest, Illinois. The 2-1 pitch to Danny. Swing and a miss. They must have called they it a strike. They must have called it, instead of a ball when it hit him, they must have called it a strike. Wow, interesting. Interesting. Because that's a strikeout of Danny Jelilich. So not only do you not get the yeah. hit by pitch, it is a strike against you. Looks like it. 
One away here in the bottom of the first. Brian Sue. Nice afternoon yesterday. Had four singles in the win over Milwaukee. BYU winning that in five innings. 14 to 6. Nobody on in a 2-0 count to Brian Sue. Brian hitting 372 as three runs batted in this season. The 2-0 pitch. Ground ball up the middle. And that'll roll into center field. And Brian Sue picking up right where he left off yesterday. On base now here in the bottom of the first with one out. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there. Fastball away that he just hit right back up the middle. A lot of his hits yesterday were in the six hole besides the one that he took, took off the pitcher. Um, and nice to see him going right back up the middle. That's where he's at his best. One out and a runner on first. The hitter, Brock Hale. Scoreless ball game here in the bottom of the first inning. First pitch to Brock. Pops it up. The catcher, Jack Thielen, back near the screen to make the catch. And now it's two away as Hale is retired on the pop-up. I thought that may carry a little bit more yeah. and get out of play, but... Stayed in, the catcher made a good play. Got a little excited today when we saw that uh, BYU was not going to face Tyler Bordner as a catcher. Then I realized all it was, he was just going to be the designated hitter. Yeah, He's get, been fantastic yeah, in this series. Get him out of the lineup. That guy, we've only gotten him out one time. He's been on base every time but one this whole series. He's been fantastic for him. Now the left-handed hitter, Jackson Clough, at the plate. Two away and a runner on first. Jackson has been on fire this series. He swings through strike one. Yeah, good changeup right there. Not often do you see the first time through an order you're going to go to your, your out pits to get ahead. He did that right there, and good start for him. This was Jackson's day yesterday. An RBI single, a double, a ground out, and then a two-run single. For over the first, Sue back safely. Conference play starting next week. And remember, originally the series against Gonzaga was going to be played in Spokane. That's now a home series, so the Cougars remain here in Provo. The 0-1 pitch to Jackson. On the inside, swing and strike two. Yeah, back-to-back changeups to start off this at-bat. Klaus got to get into battle mode right here. He's seen it twice now. He might try to sneak a fastball by him here. Klaus does, has a, does have a home run. 18 runs batted in, leading the team. It's been an RBI machine. Yes, he has. The next guy closest to him has eight. So... Doing a fantastic job in that four hole. Having some big hits. Yeah, and been playing defensively at third base for the last three or four games. And done a really nice job defensively there. Two outs, runner on first. Edwards with the 0-2 pitch to Clough. Outside, Sue on the move. And that throw from Thielen off just to the left of the bag. Really had no chance of getting Brian Sue that throw were online, it probably would have been a much closer play, but stolen base for Brian Sue. Well, they even pitched out there, and he still beat it, so that just shows you how fast Sue is. Wasn't the best throw by the catcher. It, he, like, two-hopped it there, but uh, nice job to get in the scoring position and see if uh, Clough can get the Cougs on board here in the first. BYU now 16 of 17 on stolen bases this year. The one-two pitch to Clough. Right down the middle for strike three. And that'll end the bottom of the first. No score as we head to the top of the second from Provo on the W.TV and the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Top of the second inning from Provo, Utah, Miller Park. No score, BYU and Milwaukee. Justin Sterner on the mound facing the left fielder, Colin Kreider. First pitch is... Called ball one. BYU did get a hit in the bottom of the first. That coming off the bat of Brian Sue. Kreider with eight runs batted in. Pops that up into shallow left. But it was the shortstop Carson Matthews on his way back to make the catch. Yeah, good play. Really good play to go back and get that ball. 
It's a tough play by a shortstop to go make that. If he didn't get back there, that would have dropped because McIntyre hadn't got there in time. One away here in the top of the second. We mentioned Justin Sterner coming in with an ERA of 1.20 and a 2-1 record. Now facing Tyler Bordner, the very dangerous Tyler Bordner. We've seen him defensively as a catcher in the previous games this series. Today he's the designated hitter. All he's doing is hitting 447 with six doubles and nine RBIs. Swings through that pitch from Justin Sterner. Yeah, he's he's been teasing Coach Bradshaw. Hey, can you figure out a way to get this guy out? <laughs> he's like, this guy owns us. We cannot get him out. So Sterner's like, I'll, I'll take that challenge today. The 1-1 one, one pitch called strike two. That's where Sterner's really good. If he can get that breaking ball over for a strike, called strike, it makes his fastball so much better because, hey, it's electric, his fastball. One out, nobody on. And a 1-2 count to Tyler Bordner. The pitch, swing, and a miss. And Sterner found a way, striking out the very dangerous Tyler Bordner. Yeah, great sequence. He went fastball to swing through for strike one. Then he got the breaking ball. And because he got that breaking ball called for strike two, he went elevated fastball on him. It looked like it was the same height to that breaking ball, and he swung through it. So nice sequence and good execution by Sterner. Justin Sterner has faced five hitters. So far, five outs. Coming to the plate. Jack Kraus hitting 300, does have a home run. Sophomore from Nina, Wisconsin. 6'1", 225 pound. And Sterner is a strikeout guy. He's a guy who's a high pitch count guy. I mean, you're talking 17 innings, uh, well, 16 and two-thirds innings pitch now, and he has 21 strikeouts. So he's a guy that strike out a little bit over one an inning. The 2-0 pitch to Kraus, swing and a miss, strike one. Now 2-1 and one to the first baseman. Kraus can also catch. First base guy and catcher. Kraus came in, did a good job in, as a pinch hitter. 2-1 pitch. In the first game. Foul back to the screen. Count even at 2-2. Two and two. two balls, two strikes, two outs in the top of the second. He's got him set up here, 2-2. Two, two. Go to whatever he likes right here. Might go to the slider here, see so if he can get a swing and miss. 2-2 two, two pitch. High for ball three. The count now full to number 12, Jack Kraus. Now you just say, all right, 3-2, I'm going to come at you with my fastball and see who can win the matchup. Payoff pitch is high, and Kraus earns a walk. It's the first base runner for the Panthers today. With two outs, runner on first, the third baseman, Mike Ferry, coming to the plate. Ferry hitting 225. He does have a home run. Two doubles and five runs batted in. The redshirt junior from Norwich, Illinois. Ferry was 0 for 3 yesterday, including a strikeout. Took a take a hearty cut there for strike one. The catcher Jack Thielen on deck. Sterner with the 0-1 pitch to Ferry. High, evens the count at one ball and one strike. Yeah, good crowd today, Shep. Saturday day game. No, no bad weather in sight. A little bit of sunshine. It's only 40 degrees, but it probably feels like 50 when that sun's out. Well, and we've talked about this. There's no wind right now, which certainly helps keep the temperature feeling warmer. Swing and a miss for strike two. Sterner came inside on that one. Yeah, Justin's got to make a little bit of an adjustment here. He's missing with his fastball up. Now he's getting a few swing throughs on it. But when you get back down in the zone, it's definitely going to help him out. The one-two pitch. Line foul and out of play. The count remains. A ball and a strike to Ferry. The Cougars have taken the first two games in this series. Yesterday was supposed to be a doubleheader. Second game was canceled because of weather. So what was a four-game series is now a three-game series, and the Cougars are looking for the sweep. The one-two pitch popped up. That will get out of play into the stands off to the right. 
Yeah, you know, really with the forecast the way it was all week, I was worried that we might only get two games in. We thought about even moving up a game to play a doubleheader on Thursday, and just logistically it just didn't work out. But uh, glad we were able to get that one in yesterday, so we at least get three games in like a normal series. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Little was feeling the same way. Really, really happy with the opportunity to get the three games. The one-two pitch. Popped it up into center field. Jelilich over to his right, makes the catch. And the Panthers are retired in the top of the second. Cougars coming to the plate in the bottom of the inning. No score from Provo on the W.TV and the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Designated hitter Keaton Kringlin will lead things off for the Cougars in the bottom of the second inning. No score from Provo. Mike Edwards on the mound, right-handed, right-handed sophomore from Oak Forest, Illinois. BYU does have a hit. And the first pitch from Edwards, taken for strike one. Edwards, 6'2", 200 pounds. Cougars coming into today's game as a team, hitting 290. A one pitch outside. Nice job by Keaton to not swing, and they do appeal down to first. And First base umpire Chris Schultz said no, he did not go around. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. McIntyre on deck for BYU. 1-1 one, one pitch to Keaton Kringlin. It's a little looper into left field. And Keaton hustling, rounding first, sliding in head first to second. No problem. A leadoff double for Keaton Kringlin here in the bottom of the second. Yeah, great swing right there. Got a fastball in the zone, hit it down the left field line, and it wasn't hit extremely hard. He got a little bit off the end of the bat, but uh, did a good job of knowing uh, out of the box, yeah, I'm going to get two here, and great hustle to set up a leadoff double with McIntyre up. When that hit off the bat, immediately you knew it was going to be a base hit. It was yeah. just whether or not it was a single or a double. Yeah. And the, the outfielder did a good job of cutting it off, but uh, Keaton showed off a little bit of speed right there. I like that. Mitch McIntyre at the plate with a runner in scoring position. Keaton Kringlin with the leadoff double. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. The pitch to McIntyre. Ground ball to the second baseman, Boobin, over to first for the out. But it does advance Keaton Kringlin to third with only one out in the inning. Yeah, that's a good quality at bat right there by Mitch McIntyre. Hit the ground ball to second, move him over. You get guys to third base in less than two outs, Shep, your percentages of scoring have just gone up huge. DJ McNew at the plate. Hit his first home run as a BYU Cougar on Thursday night. Back in the lineup today, defensively at second. And now facing Edwards with a runner on third and one out. That pitch inside for ball one. Yeah, DJ, DJ did a good job yesterday in this similar situation, hitting a ground ball to short and getting an RBI out of it. One ball, no strikes, and one out. The delivery from Edwards to McNew. Ground ball foul. Head coach Mike Littlewood running out to grab that baseball. Got to keep that blood flow. Absolutely. When it's loose. chilly like this, keep moving. Stay warm. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you here on the W.TV and the New Skin BYU Sports Network. Thanks for tuning in to BYU Baseball. 1-1 pitch to McNew. Taken for strike two. Yeah, it looked a little low. Good pitcher's pitch right there. A little bit of a delayed call on some of these strike calls. Well, now you just got to find a way. You got infield now playing in with two strikes. Put a ball in play. Up the middle is open. The one-two pitch to McNew on its way inside. DJ had to jump out of the way a little bit to avoid getting hit. It evens the count at two and two. DJ wearing number 12 from the great state of Missouri. Knew that was coming, just waiting for it. You don't need to shake your head when stuff like that's said. <laughs> <laughs> two-two pitch to DJ. Line drive into left field, and that'll be an RBI single for D.J. McNew as Keaton Kringlin trots in from third base to put the Cougars on the board one to nothing. Yeah, and got a changeup right there, right in the wheelhouse, and just hammered it. Good job sitting back there and 
and getting that pitch in a good count, be able to just hammer that pitch and drive in the first run. Good at bat, DJ. The Cougars on the board first. They get a run here in the bottom of the second inning. There's still only one out. And the batter coming to the plate, the catcher, Noah Hill, who leads this team in batting average at 415, also has five RBI. The first pitch, a bunt down the third base side, goes foul. Yeah, how about the catchers in the game today, right? Well, our favorite DH is not catcher. Yeah, Bordner, Bordner now is the, yeah, is the DH today. but Not too often do you have your catchers <laughs> leading your team in average. And both above 400. Yeah. Noah's done a fantastic job this year. Just big at, at bat after big at, at bat, and he's done a really good job of catching. Well, and to get that type of offensive production from the eight spot yeah. in the, low, in the order is fantastic. It's huge. It really is. One out, McNew at first. 0-1 pitch to Noah Hill, lined right at the shortstop, Schwecky. And they're going to double up McNew. He was on the move. They'll throw over to first for the second out of the inning. But BYU does score in the bottom of the inning on an RBI single from DJ McNew. It's 1-0 BYU heading to the top of the third on the W.TV and the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. Top of the third inning. From Miller Park in Provo, Utah, BYU leading Milwaukee one to nothing. Cougars with three hits and the one run. BYU going for the sweep of this series against the Panthers. The long homestand continues for BYU. Today's the final non-conference game for the Cougars. They'll begin WCC play against Gonzaga coming up on Thursday. Justin Sterner back out on the mound facing Jack Thielen. The first pitch is taken for a strike. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss, and Sterner quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes on Thielen. Well, it's the first time we've seen Thielen in the series as the backup catcher. He's hitting 200. He has one hit and one RBI. A pitch outside from Justin, one ball and two strikes. He's 6'4", 205. Big guy. He's a sophomore from West Bend, Wisconsin. The whole team are big guys. I know. Jeff. It seems like we say yeah. that all the time with these guys. Unbelievable. It's that Midwest upbringing. Yeah, I guess. Right? Corn fed, you know? Uh huh. I mean, besides a couple of them, these are, these are grown men out here playing. It's like when BYU football played at Wisconsin and just the offensive line was just massive. The 1 2 pitch to Thielen, swing and a miss. Sterner struck him out for the first out at the top of the third. Yeah, good elevated fastball right there by Sterner. No chance for Thielen to, to put that one in play. Zach Nagalski playing right field today. Hitting in the ninth spot for Milwaukee. Comes to the plate with one out and nobody on. Nagalski, a sophomore from Milwaukee. Hitting 167 and swings through strike one. I love watching Justin Sterner pitch because he just comes right at you. Here He's we, not messing around no. with anything. Here it is. Come and hit it. The 0-1 pitch to Nagalski outside. Evens the count at a ball and a strike. And as good as his fastball is, because his first start against Northwestern, he couldn't throw a breaking ball for a strike, and he still had five or six strikeouts with just his fastball. But when he's got his breaking ball going, yeah, good luck. 1-1 pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen. I know our hitters hated facing him all fall. He's got a lot of backspin on his fastball, so and a ton of hand speed, so that ball just feels like it stays on plane, and it almost feels like it rises as it gets there. It's hard to hit that thing hard. 1-2 pitch from Sterner. Swing and a miss, and another strikeout for Justin. He sends down Zach Nogalski for the second out of the inning. Back to the top of the order. Nobody on and two outs. Devin Rybacki, the center fielder, coming to the plate. Well, right back, he's had a good series. He's a scrapping player that just finds a way to get on base. Grounded out in his first at-bat, leading off the top of the first. But yesterday had two singles. That pitch inside for ball one. It's 
says he's 6'2", but he looks taller than that to me. He really does. Now 2-0 oh, to Rybacki. Hanover Park, Illinois. That's where Rybacki hails from. Redshirt senior. Sterner delivers the 2-0 pitch. Fouled out of play. Now 2-1. This view never gets old. Looking out on the field, which is looking great. And then the snow-capped mountains. The mountains covered all, and the white snow just makes it even more gorgeous than it normally is. Swing and a foul. The count now two and two. Yeah. I, I Honestly, this is not homerism here. I just don't know if you're ever going to get a better view in college baseball than right here in Provo. I agree, and you know who else agrees? Is the head coach of the Milwaukee Panthers. <laughs> he told us he's been to a lot of ballparks in his 23 year career, 26 year career, and this is by far the best ballpark he's ever been to. 2-2 two -two pitch. Popped up into right field. Brock Hale there for the third out of the inning. Heading to the bottom of the third with BYU leading 1-0. This is BYU Baseball on the W.TV and the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU Baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Carson Matthews leading off the bottom of the third for the BYU Cougars. Takes ball one. BYU leading Milwaukee 1-0. An RBI single from DJ McNew. The one run in this ballgame. Edwards to Matthews. Matthews hits that ball off the wall. Unfortunately, it was foul down the left field line. Yeah, good How many times have we said yeah. that with Carson? He has these well, big hits down the left field line that usually just end up foul. Yeah, I mean, he, he can hit a fastball, especially on the middle half. He loves to turn and burn. And he keeps those fair is what we want to see, though. 1-1 one, one pitch to Carson. Outside, now 2-1. Danny Jelilich on deck. Edwards is set and ready for the 2-1 pitch. Inside corner, evens the count of two balls and two strikes. While things are chilly here in Provo, down in Vegas, things are much warmer. Tonight, BYU basketball beginning the quarterfinals of the WCC tournament against San Diego. Looking to win tonight and then would uh, play Monday. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Carson Matthews, taken for ball three. Nice patience by the freshman on that pitch. Count yeah. now full, three and two. Got it to full count, now find a way to win it right here, Cars. The payoff pitch from Edwards. Ground ball right up the middle. A base hit for Carson Matthews to lead off the bottom of the third. Yeah, nice at bat right there. I love seeing Carson hit the ball back up the middle. Both of BYU's hits have come up the middle. Or, excuse me, the, the first hit of the game, Brian Sue, and yep. then that hit both right up the middle. And they seem to be defensively giving BYU that entire space right up the middle. Yeah, they, they usually have the shortstop shaded over in the six hole, so there's a lot of open territory there up the middle. Runner on first, nobody out. Throw over to first, Carson back safely. Danny Jelilich, the batter. Danny struck out in the first. Well, after watching Thielen make his first throw when Sue stole, I can see Carson wanting to take off here. First pitch, Jelilich showing bunt, takes ball one. Almost hit him again. It did. Yeah. And, and we learned in the first inning... That if you don't get out of the way. Well, yeah, new, uh, new college rule this year. Is he was it. hit by the pitch. Yeah. But the it, home plate umpire said that he did not try to get out of the way, and so they gave him a strike. Another throw over to first. I think that's just a rule that should be taken out of the rule book. I mean, I understand if the hitter, if the hitter generally tries to lean over with his, his elbow and get hit, but... When you throw a fastball up and in and it hits you up in the shoulder, ah, it shouldn't be a 
shouldn't be a strike just because you didn't duck or turn away. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. The 1-0 pitch to Jelilich. Get down. A little blooper in the left center. And now runners at first and second after the single from Danny Jelilich with nobody out. Yeah, a little jam piece right there. Got in on his hands, but Jelly just strong enough to bloop it over to short. Dropped right in front of the left fielder for a for back-to-back -back hits here to open up the third. Yeah, Brian Tu coming to the plate. Picked up a hit in his first at-bat we were just talking about. Ground ball right up the middle. Comes to the plate with nobody out and runners on first and second. BYU already leading 1-0. Five hits for the Cougars already. Edwards pitch to Sue. Yeah, this is one of those ones where, one. where Coach Littlewood kind of has to think a bunch because he's like, man, Sue's one of our best hitters. He's batting close to 400. But you got Brock Hill on deck. Normally here you would like Sue to bunt these guys over, but you'd also like to put up a big inning here. So it's kind of one of those, hey, what do you do? You know, Do you trust your guy to get a hit or do you sack him over? Sue awaits the 1 0 pitch. Does show bunt. Matthews looked to be going towards third, luckily able to get back. There was no throw from the catcher, Thielen, but. Carson definitely had a big jump. Yes, he did. I think he was trying to time it there. Brock Hale on deck. But right now, Brian Sue at the plate, looking at a 2 0 count. And the pitch, ground ball in the hole. Matthews will stop at third. And a single for Brian Sue, and now with nobody out, the bases are loaded for the big bat of Brock Hale. Yeah, left fielder came in hard. Carson probably would have had a chance to score there, but with no outs, with you don't want to get anybody thrown out the dish, especially when you have Brock Hale on deck. So I like that call by Coach Littlewood. Now there's a meeting on the pitcher's mound. Well, they don't have anybody in the pen, so now they're just talking about how they want to pitch Brock here. Nowhere to put him. Now Brock last at bat. He's frustrated with himself. He swung an elevated fastball and popped it up to the catcher. You won't see him do that very often. Seems like every time Brock Hill hits a ball, he hits it hard. That kid's just a professional hitter. He's one of the best pure hitters I've ever seen. And he has such a quiet demeanor. Oh, it really does. Great, a great guy. Just a quiet confidence about him. There are a lot of guys on that team, on this team, that are like that. Great guys, real quiet, but they, they, they let the bat do the talking. Yeah. Well, this is the type part of the game where you can extend and blow this thing apart here with the hitters that are coming up in Hale, Clough, and Keaton. Brock Hale. At the plate, nobody out, and bases loaded. And this is great speed. All three guys can really run on the bases. The first pitch to Brock. Inside corner for strike one. And I would imagine that's probably the area that Edwards is going to try and take advantage of against Brock. Anything out over the plate, and Brock's going to crush it. Yeah, yeah, like you said, if you miss over the middle here, it might be a five to nothing ball game. Bases loaded, nobody out. BYU leading one nothing. The 0 1 pitch to Hale in the dirt. Nice block by Thielen. Thielen just barely blocked that. I was watching on the screen, and it barely, barely tipped his glove and got to his body, or else I would have snuck underneath his glove there for a run. You already mentioned the speed. Yeah. All three guys. I mean, Carson stole home last night. You have the fastest guy on our team in Jelich and the third fastest guy at first. So, Didn't you say there were 27,000 views yeah. of that play yep. on to online? It's pretty cool. 1-1 one, one pitch to Brock Hale. Ground ball to the shortstop. Over to second for the first out. Over to first for the second out of the inning. But a run does score as Carson Matthews comes in from third. It's now 2 to nothing BYU. Yeah, you'd like to see anything but a double play right there. But uh, just got that off the end of the bat, hit it right to short. They did a good job getting that double play. But you got Clough up here with the runner on third. And uh, 
he's been just an RBI machine this year. Two outs. Runner on third. Clough at the plate. The first pitch from Edwards is inside for ball one. Second, plate, second baseman is playing deep into shallow right field. BYU now leading 2-0. 1-0 -oh pitch in the dirt. And once again, a great block from Jack Thielen. Two-zero -oh count to Jackson. Keaton Kringlin on deck. Two-zero -oh pitch inside. Now three and zero to Clough. I'm not sure they want anything to do with Jackson Clough right now. Yeah, they said, "Hey, you know what? Three-zero. They're going to throw a changeup right here to see if he'll swing at it." But uh, they want to face Keaton on deck right now. 3-0 pitch. Wow, I like it. Chopped foul and right into the dugout of Milwaukee. They came with a fastball. I like it. Jackson was on time, just fouled it back. 3-1 the count now. I like him being aggressive 3-0 there with how hot he's been lately. Edwards is set. And the 3-1 delivery. Misses outside. And that's a walk to Jackson Clough. Keaton Kringlin will come to the plate with two outs. And now runners on the corners. His team leading 2 nothing. Keaton with a double in the second inning. A double with the speed on the bags right now would score two. The first pitch to Kringlin. Popped it up into right field. Nagalski back on the warning track to make the third out of the inning. But BYU does add another run in the bottom of the third. Cougars leading 2-0 on the W.TV and the new skin, BYU Sports Network.